हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू पैथोलॉजिकल कॉन्सेप्ट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न कॉन्सेप्ट अबाउट एक्यूट माइलाइड लिकेमिया दैट इज एम एल ए एम एल इज मैलिग्नेंट क्लोन ऑफ माइलॉइड सेल्स इन बोन मैरो With maturation arrest at the level of blast. So let's understand this. Suppose. this is our bone marrow this is the bone it has got bone marrow now bone marrow has hematopoietic stem cells it differentiate into myeloid and lymphoid cell lines and myeloid and lymphoid cell line these are the Known as precursor cells, and these further differentiate and form various types of cells, like myeloid, mature, and form. As we can see, myeloid forms R B C. it forms granulocyte it forms monocyte and it forms the platelet so we can see all these cells are produced from the myeloid now lymphoid produces basically two types of cells the b cells and the t cells now this is the normal hematopoiesis going on in the bone marrow what happens the hematopoietic stem cell it gives rise to the common progenitor common progenitor cells and the further give rise to other type of blast and finally the mature cells are produced but here in this case there is maturation arrest so all these cells are not going to be formed our cell division stops somewhere here the cells are not going to mature so there will be build up of these blast cells so we have myeloblast here and if this no this does not mature we have lymphoblast here now we will see the difference between myeloblast and lymphoblast myeloblast these are large cells lymphoblast these are slightly smaller than myeloblast this is the nucleus it has larger cytoplasm as compared to the lymphoblast as we can see here this whole is the nucleus it the lymphoblast has scant cytoplasm 
which is agranular. Here we have more amount of cytoplasm which is granular not talking about nucleus there may be three to five prominent nucleoli here the nucleoli is in inconspicuous maybe one or two now the these are the granules and there may be or rod which is present in the myeloid cells Now the question are asked about the or rods. So or rods are these are pathognomonic of myeloid cells. Or rods are pathognomonic. And what are these? these are azurophilic needle like inclusion present in the blast remember azurophilic needle like inclusion now we know that aml has more than 20% of blast but there are other cases in which the criteria of 20% is not considered we are going to have a look the types in which blast is less than 20% translocation a21 translocation 1517 version of the 16 and translocation of the 16 chromosome apart from this myeloid sarcoma is considered aml these entities are considered in the aml despite the blast percentage now talking about the cytochemistry of the blast first myeloblast myeloblast is myeloperoxidase positive and sudan black B positive, abbreviated as SBB. Whereas lymphoblast this is. mpo negative sbb negative 
but are pass positive. The pass is paroidic acid shift. These are pass positive. Now other blast in this series vinyl blast we see. And let's talk about the markers. The CD markers here are CD fifteen. CD33 for the myeloblast and uh, lymphoblast will be considered in the ALL and uh, moving forward we have monoblast these are also MPO negative, Sudan black B negative, but these are NSC positive. Now the NSC is non-specific esterase. So there is some entity which is known as specific esterase. We will see. This is also known as leader stain. And uh, this is positive for granulocytic series. And it is useful in the diagnosis of extramedullary tumor of the blast like granulocytic sarcoma. Talking about erythroblast, these are pass positive. and uh, mega carrier blast these are basically negative but the cd markers for this are 41 42b and cd61 as we know there are glycoprotein present over the plat platelet so these are the markers and for erythroblast we have glycophorin A and CD71. Now the FAB classification. We have M02. M7 subtypes. Now, quickly have a look. Now, M0 is undifferentiated. M1 is AML without maturation M2 is AML with maturation M3 is acute promyelocytic leukemia M4 is acute myelo monocytic leukemia M5 is acute monocytic leukemia M6 is acute erythroid
leukemia and here m7 mega karyo cystic leukemia now quickly see this is the most common aml with the translocation 821 now m3 we will discuss it in later uh, in detail later now the m4 this involves in version 16 m5 there is gum infiltration you should know gum infiltration the m6 m6 acute erythroid leukemia these two uh, uh, this comprise approximately about 3% and this is also about 3% but the important thing is the mega karyocytic leukemia associated with down syndrome associated with down syndrome we will see m3 in detail now m3 in many pgme questions are asked about this m3 acute promyelocytic leukemia this is the translocation 1517 pml gene at chromosome 15 and retinoic acid receptor alpha gene present at chromosome 17 translocation takes place and the molecular genetics it forms eml rara and uh, it has maximum amount of or rods or rods are maximum and the complication is dic you can learn this as uh, this is got three here m3 and see the three letters dic this is the complication most common complication it's emergency situation in case of acute promyelocytic leukemia and uh, for treatment we give here all trans retinoic acid and arsenic trioxide arsenic trioxide now the who classification 2016 for the aml the blast percentage is more than 20% blast in bone marrow or peripheral blood while uh, in fab classification it was more than 30% blast so who has reduced the criteria of the blast now it has divided aml into six groups first aml with recurrent cytogenetic abnormality about 85% of the cases included in this the various translocation as we have seen now second is aml with myelodysplasia related changes here the criteria is more than 50% dysplasia or we can say more than 50% of blast are seen and dysplasia in and dysplasia in two cell lines 
also there should be the previous history of previous history of mds it has got poor prognosis third is therapy related therapy related myeloid neoplasm your two categories are there alkylating agent related ml and topo isomerase topo isomerase to inhibitor related ml there is translocation 11q23 ml fourth is aml not otherwise specified nos fifth is myeloid sarcoma and sixth is Uh, ml related to down syndrome here the most mutation takes place is ata1 ata1 mutation important bgme question ata1 mutation there is transient abnormal myelopoiesis transient abnormal myelopoiesis and uh, as it is associated with the down syndrome the sofab m3 m7 is most common here m7 mega karyoblastic Leukemia is most common in case of the Down syndrome. Moving on to next, lab findings. As there is decreased RBC, so there is anemia. Decreased platelet, thrombocytopenia. The WBC count is variable. it is raised generally which is less than 25000 so good good prognosis more than 1 lakh bad prognosis now serum ldh is raised lysozyme is raised these are most commonly seen in uh m4 m5 fab m4 m5 now the excess lysozyme or neuramidase it causes proximal proximal renal tubular damage leading to hypokalemia other causes of hypokalemia are the drugs and the cells which rapidly uptake the potassium ion aml is often associated with tumor lysis syndrome now it is characterized by we have a look of tumor lysis syndrome hyper uricemia hyperphosphatemia hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia
Now the features which we get nausea, vomiting. Here, in case of hyperphosphatemia, it leads to acute renal failure (ARF). For hyperkalemia, there is cardiac arrhythmia. and hypocalcemia will lead to muscle cramp so remember guys this is hypocalcemia here not hypercalcemia hypercalcemia is very rare in case of the AML about prognostic factor on the basis of cytogenetics and uh, molecular genetics so see Translocation K21, translocation 15, 17, inversion 16. These are favorable prognosis. Now, normal karyotype. Translocation 9-11 This is what intermediate prognosis And bad prognosis include Inversion 3 Translocation Other than the Translocation 9-11 other than that of intermediate prognosis monosomy 7 monosomy 5 deletion 5q and 7q deletion Investigation of choice in case of AML is bone marrow biopsy. This is the investigation of choice. This is a PGME question, and we can also do flow cytometry. Coming on to treatment, now the treatment includes two phases. First one induction phase. And second is consolidation phase. In induction phase, as the patient count is high, so we bring the patient to the remission state. So here remission is achieved. Remission is achieved in this phase. Drugs used here are Cytosine Arabinocyte or Citarabine, also known as RSC, and uh, Donorubicin, Etoposite. These drugs are used here. The RRC used for 7 days and the donor rubicin used for the 3 days. So it is basically known as 7 plus 3 regimen. And here the patient comes in the remission phase. Remission is achieved. The cells count has come to a normal state. So to prevent the further relapse, we start the consolidation therapy. And in consolidation phase, we use high dose of RSC, high deck, also known as high deck, high dose of RSC we use here and the patient goes in complete remission. So there is a definition for the complete remission and we will see what are the criteria. So complete remission. The criteria is when last 
less than 5% in bone marrow, platelet more than 1 lakh per mm cube and absolute neutrophil count more than 1000 per microliter and there is leukemia associated immunophenotype cells LAIP leukemia associated immunophenotype cells less than 0.1% so this is the criteria of complete remission in case of AML now finally bone marrow stem cell transplant is considered in the young patient bone marrow stem cell transplant is considered and the best is allogenic stem cell transplant allogenic stem cell transplant so guys that's all for now in the AML